We're learning a lot of things about the rice genome in our studies of genome-wide association mapping in rice. Basically what we do is we assemble a very diverse collection of germplasm, and this has come mostly from Erie's gene bank. And it represents geographical diversity, morphological diversity, and genetic diversity. And we analyze, um, this is many hundreds of different rice varieties from all over the world using molecular markers and sequencing, and we use the sequence information to do a population structure analysis so we can understand how different pockets of variation are in fact closely related to each other and often geographically um, occurring in the same regions of the world. Those different subpopulations are very important for a genome-wide association study because we have to control for kinship relationships. Essentially, we have to control for things that are more closely related to each other than they are to other things in our germplasm collection. Once we understand the population structure, we then uh, work with people from different parts of the world interested in a variety of different traits and phenotypes, and the germplasm is sent to them, and they undertake different types of uh, phenotypic analysis, and the phenotypes can then be associated with the genotypes that we've already uh, analyzed on these lines to come up with associations and that tells us which regions of the genome contain genes that contribute to the phenotypic variation that many people are interested in. At Cornell, because we can't grow rice in the field, we actually had to develop a series of phenotyping technologies or phenotyping strategies that allow us to look at um, the rice seeds and the rice seedlings or the rice plants under highly controlled conditions. And we chose the topic of root system architecture for our, uh, in, for our very controlled environment screening of this rice diversity population. At Cornell, we engaged a wonderful young scientist who is training in the area of physics and agricultural engineering and we coupled him with a young woman who was studying rice genetics and breeding in my laboratory. And together, these two graduate students developed a new phenotyping system by which we can analyze how rice roots grow, what angle, how deep, how proliferic, how branched. We assemble information about each of the varieties in our panel. We phenotype them under our controlled conditions. And then we were able to demonstrate regions of the genome known to contain genes that contribute to the variation we saw in rooting depth, rooting angle, or uh, root branching. Simultaneously and un unbeknownst to us, there were researchers in Japan who were looking at essentially the same problem using field-grown plants. And over the past 15 years, they had very laboriously grown plants in the field, dug them up, and examined similar traits to what we were examining in little 10-day-old seedlings in a controlled environment at Cornell. What was very exciting for us was that one day I went to a conference. I met my colleague from Japan. We were speaking back to back in front of an international audience. He reported on having cloned a gene underlying a root angle QTL, and it coincided exactly with one of the regions of the genome that we had been able to identify in 10-day-old seedlings. Now the importance of this discovery, which was somewhat serendipitous at the time, was that it meant that instead of spending 15 years digging up plant roots from the field, there was the possibility to use a 10-day-old seedling assay under a controlled environment anywhere in the world, even where rice doesn't normally grow, to identify regions of the genome that are associated with this very important trait, which confers important levels of drought tolerance and in many cases, if you want a shallow-rooted variety, it can control nutrient uptake, especially of nitrogen and phosphorus, which are abundant in the surface levels of the soil. So we are now working with our colleagues in Japan, our colleagues at Erie, and others who have the field uh, evaluation process well underway, and we're looking to coordinate the discoveries that we're making using controlled environments relating them to field environments, and then using the information we get from the genomics, looking for regions of the genome that breeders will want to intergress to give the varieties that are adapted in their regions longer roots or highly branched roots conferring drought tolerance 
or potentially tolerance to uptake of nutrients that are deficient in many soils. So we've been very fortunate to have a large number of collaborators around the world, and without them we would never have known which of the many genes in QTLs are significant for these traits in the field.